Draw, 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 draw. Straight. Fade, 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 fade. High fade, low fade. Straight. High draw, low draw. What are you trying to play? Are you giving yourself your best chance of playing the shot towards the target? Or are you trying to chase that unicorn, the straight shot that doesn't really exist, only once in a while? It's the poison chalice that we're all trying to get. It's the, we're setting up straight, we're aiming straight, and the balls don't fly straight. So how do we regulate that? How can you control the ball flight if you haven't got the awareness? If you don't know how to make that fade straighter or turn it into a draw or turn that slice into a hook. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you have to hook the ball to stop a slice, but it definitely means you have to move towards a hook. You might never get the draw or get the, get the hook, but you're moving towards it. So we need to have a sense of what a hook is. Or we're just gonna live in a slice world and play for the slice and accept that that's us. That's gonna limit our game. That's the ceiling to our game now. And it's gonna really limit my opportunity on the golf course. It's gonna limit where I'm aiming, how I play the shot, what club I take. If the flag's in a certain position, I can't take the flag on. And so our game is seriously constrained because of the shot we play and limited options. But maybe the way I'm setting up and maybe the, the way I'm approaching it isn't really giving me scope to develop my awareness, which will actually help me recognize the movements I need to make. And when I see that result, when I see the ball fly a different way, suddenly I've got a feel for what I need to do. Do you always look at the hole for every single put on the green? No, you don't. You know where it's going. You know where the hole is. You've read the break and then what happens? Your attention shifts and it shifts onto the break. It shifts to the apex or the, the start line and you're, you're actually shifting your attention away from the hole. But what you're doing is you're shifting it towards your intention, which is the, shot, the shape of the shot or the, the roll of the ball towards the hole. It's like playing snooker, cutting the ball into the middle pocket. You're not looking at the middle pocket. You're not set up to the middle pocket. You're playing away from it. In fact, the middle pockets might be behind you or out of your field of view. doesn't matter because you know where you're going, but where your attention is, is on the journey. And that's what we need to immerse ourselves in and that's why we need to develop our feel for the golf swing. Without that, we don't really have anything. We have one movement, which we're hoping is gonna hit it straight. And when it does go straight, it's kind of, oh, brilliant, that validates it, that confirms that it's right. But yet, the other nine shots out of 10 go this way or that way, and I can't regulate it. The field of view here is rich in information. This is the stimulus that we're reacting to. Think of every sport you play, you're generally looking in the direction your, your action is, is moving towards. If we look at the target, what can happen is the target become, we can become fixated on the target and the target becomes our direction for action. So we make a swing, but we're swinging to the target. But by swinging to the target, we're actually unknowingly swinging away from the target. The golf swing is working around the body. It's not a straight line. So if I start moving to the target, by the time I actually get to the golf ball, my club's probably not gonna be swinging to the target. Quite often, for a right-hander, it's gonna go left. If I, the change of direction in your golf swing is where that reaction exists. That is where the action is. That's the primitive reflex. That is, you're swinging back, and now you are moving to the target. And this is the, re, this is the reflex. What's the reflex reacting to? It's your intention. If your intention is the target, from the top of your swing, you're moving to the target but I've got a problem. This is the top of my golf swing. The ball's down there. Now I've got to get to the ball, but I've already started reacting and moving. By the time I get to the golf ball, the ball's over there, we're over here. It's a rotary action, it's on an incline plane. Suddenly, oh, my club's going left. But in my mind, I'm swinging straight and I'm getting a fade and I'm thinking, why am I getting a fade and I'm swinging straight? I've got my alignment stick on the ground, I've got my club face, leading edge square, neutral grip, shoulders are square. My intention is the target. Am I using this field of view to line my club face? Am I using this field of view to recognize where my feet are? Am I using this field of view for my shoulders? And guess what, in every other sport, you react to that field of view. Where are you going? Everything reacts to 
the image of what you intend to do. And therefore, without knowing, you've got this subconscious reaction, which is all, it's, it's continu your body is continually adapting to the environment. It's reacting to all this stimulus, the wind, the, the, you won't even realize the, the cues that you're picking up from your environment, just watching the trees, seeing how the, where the clouds are moving, watching how, where the flags, where the flags blow in, all these things that are going on, you'll feel it as well. So often the environment so enclosed in a driving range, we become desensitized. We're watching a ball fly, but we're not really adapting to the elements because we can't feel them. So sometimes take a step out, actually feel what it's like. It's actually really windy today. I come out here, really, really windy. I come in here, can't feel it, okay? That's gonna affect straight away how I react with my movement. Now I've got a better idea of what's going on. I look at the flags. I'm just getting more and more information. And I'm looking where I'm gonna go. Now in golf, we're not looking in the direction we're gonna play when we're gonna make the swing. So it's down to memory recall. So how good is your memory? How good can you recall what you intend to do? This is imagination. This is visualization and this exists out here, not down here. If you're looking down here, suddenly now the dwell time on the ball can increase. You start thinking about the ball. That's, in the, that's, in the, that's now my, where my focus is. So now, What's this primitive reflex reacting to? Am I reacting to the shot that I've got in my mind or am I reacting to the ball that is in my field of view? Possibly it's the ball, I see this a lot. Reacting to the ball. But what am I, what am I also trying to do? I'm trying to hit it straight. So I've kind of got an idea where I'm aiming, dead straight, I get to the top of my swing, I'm going to the target, I'm trying to hit the ball. And what do we see? A lot of people who are ball focused trying to hit it straight. And what happens? They struggle with the strike on the ball because it's such a, it's such a, there's such a huge focus on the ball. That's the, it's not, it doesn't turn into a, it's not a swing anymore. It's turned into a, an attempt to hit the ball. And the direction of the golf swing isn't actually what they intend. And they start to get fades or slices or pull draws. And this is all going on unintentionally. They're trying to hit the ball straight, but they're getting all this variability in their swing. And guess what? The movement they're making is pretty consistent because they get these results all the time. So when people ask about consistency, you are already doing something fairly consistent, it's just producing results that you don't, you don't actually intend, you don't actually like the outcome of, but you accept it. And how do we then change? How do we now change that outcome? We've got to develop that awareness. We've got to break our habits. This is a habit. This is habitual behavior. Um, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna change it's not we're not gonna rectify this by doing the same things because they're already they're already producing the results we're not happy with so it's the age-old Einstein saying of insanity doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results we are getting different results but they're not what we they're not what we're happy with we're getting slices to the right we're getting pull draws to the left how do I actually start the ball right and curve it back well if I never practice this how do I intend to actually develop this as a feel and develop awareness and the trust and confidence to do it? Because the confidence is born out of practice, but it's effective practice. So you've got to ask yourself, how am I practicing? When I go to the driving range, is my practice actually of benefit? Is it conducive now for, for learning? Am I, am I learning? Am I getting better? Am I actually doing something that's helping me to get better? And you have to be very, you've got to be uh, discipline in your approach, very self-reflective and non-judgmental. We get very ball focused, we get very uh, outcome focused and this is creating a dissonance between ourselves and the attachment, association, feel, affinity we have for our movement that's producing this outcome. We can't match movement to golf shots and you have to be very honest with yourself and start to say, well, I need to have a rethink because on reflection, what I'm doing is not producing the results that I intend and that I'm gonna be able to use on a golf course. I'm not gonna be able to change my game plan. My golf game is gonna stay the same and the handicap plateaus and we stay, we stay the same handicap for years because the mindset's not changing. So how do we change the mindset? Well, we've got to change how we perceive this. How do we, how do we see the challenge of a golf shot? The environment is obviously important, but it's ever-changing. 
we're always playing golf. We're never really practicing, we're always playing. We're just playing in a different environment with a different challenge. So how do we engage ourselves in this environment? How do we, how do we challenge ourselves in a way that's meaningful and representative of what we're gonna face on a golf course? So we need to start to see different shots, see things differently, essentially change our reality of how we perceive this game. And that's a big, mind, a big shift in mindset. But the, the first thing to do, I would suggest, is go on the point green and get a big breaking putt. And notice what you do on big breaking putt, okay? And then pick a golf club up and visualize a ball fly with the same break, but in the air. And shift your attention to where it was with the putt. Obviously it's gonna be in the air now because the ball's going up, we've got a vertical element to it. And actually swing and move in response to the apex in the sky. And actually swing in response to the curvature of the break, the curvature of the ball, the break. And what you'll find is you're actually directing your action away from the target. Now the target's over here to my left, and I'm actually swinging to the, to the right. My body's actually moving in response to this flight. So my finish is over here to the right. My target's over here. Just take note of your, of your finish position when you practice it. Do you always make the same finish? Are you always finishing here, facing the target? Okay. If you are, then you're probably making a very similar action every time. Your action's probably very consistent. It's just producing inconsistent results. So how can I change this? Well, you need to use the process that I've been alluding to throughout this video. You need to use variability, the environment. You need to start to use your visualization and you need to dare to throw the alignment stick to the side. Don't think about the leading edge of the golf club. Don't even think about your grip. Actually, just look where you're going and let the club just sit behind the ball. Use this field of view to line the club face for you, because that's what's happening when you throw a ball. You don't look at your hand, you don't look at your foot, you're looking where you're going, and guess what? The foot, the hand, whatever you're using, that's gonna start moving in response to your intention. And guess what? It aligns itself. It's gonna move into a place that's gonna facilitate this release that you need for the shot or the throw that you're picturing. So guess what? It's aligning itself. That reorganization of its movement in the moment is continual realignment. Now, that's not to say where you start from isn't important. Yes, it's, it, can, it, it, it can be influential, but guess what? All these shots are different, so they all require different setups, different postures, and you don't really need to think about it. Think about every other act in life. Think about every other movement. You don't have to think about how you align your body, how you grip an instrument or an object. You don't think about it, it's something that happens intuitively. And what's it, how do you actually grip it? Well, you're gripping it in response to your intention. If you're gonna drink out of a cup, you're gonna approach it a certain way because your body already recognizes what you're gonna do. So it's moving into a place that's gonna facilitate that action. So what we wanna do is we wanna be using the intention to organize the alignment, which is gonna facilitate the action of your golf swing to produce the shot which matches your intention. So how do I let that happen? I don't look down here, because this is giving me no information. This is very, very kind of low level. There's not a lot of stim low level stimulus, but if I start looking at this and start thinking about where my feet are, now my body's in, the problem is my body is in view. Once your body becomes in view, you become more aware of your body. And especially if I start thinking about where I'm swinging and how I'm going to hit this ball, I'm internalizing this to such a high degree that I'm going to start to influence or inhibit that primitive reflex, that reaction to my intention, because my intention shifted to this. So I'm starting to lose. I'm becoming disconnected now from where I'm actually going, what I, what I want to do, where the ball's going, the curvature, the alignment. I'm not using this stimulus for alignment anymore, I'm using this. I'm using the ground around me. And guess what? This is probably not the most rich source of information for you to move. Because all the information's out here. The stimulus is out there. So when you walk into your golf ball, look at the target. Maybe use one hand. Don't look down. Don't look at the grip. Look where you're going. 
Now grip the club. And now move your feet into a stance. You can have a little look down just to get a check where the ball is so you can adjust, but you're looking where you're going, you're moving around. And this is how we're aligning. And then when we get to the golf ball, we're not rushing, we're not taking it straight back. We can have a look, we can settle ourselves just to make a little adjustment. But now you're entrusting the body. Now you're letting the body take over. And then play some shots in reaction to that, in, in reaction to that intention. Play to the curvature, play the big hooks, play the big slices and get really creative with your practice.